Okay, guys. So, as you can see, this is part two of my monster finds. I've been promising, uh, you know, again, this awesome stuff. And I got some awesome stuff here. It's really late right now. Way later than I should be up. And it's... Honestly, I've probably had too many of these, but I'm going to try this video. If it's long, what can I tell you? But I will say there's some awesome, awesome, awesome stuff in here. Um, I think there are only, honestly, three records that were recorded or released post-1980. So, just give you an idea of what's here. A lot of psych. I'm getting very lucky with the psych. My local store be getting in a lot of cool stuff excuse me I'm just snatching it up you know but again I should say so this stuff here goes back um, to about the time my daughter was born so two and a half months so some of the stuff I've had for a while some of it you know just stuff I bought since then um, so I want to dedicate this video to Two people. I want to dedicate it to Fred uh, because he's been saying there's not a lot of videos lately. So here's a video for you, Fred. And there's some cool stuff in here. I think he'll dig. And Nathan. Nathan Morales, my man Nathan. Um, a lot of cool psych in here for you, man. You'll dig it. Um, but yeah. Cheers, guys. I want to say uh, thank you for all the well wishes. My last video. I start my new job on Monday which technically is tomorrow. It's like 2 a.m. Sunday, uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning. So, all right, I'll get started here. I'm gonna try and run through these quick, but I got a lot. There's some cool stuff. Some I'll talk about more than others. But here's one that probably would have fit in better with my last video, but I just picked it up, just reissued. TNT by Tortoise, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, of course, Tortoise, the sort of jazzy post-rock band, 2LP, reissued for their uh, Thrill Jockeys 20th anniversary. Really, really well done, sounds excellent. Great album, really one of their better albums for sure, but awesome, glad to get that. Um, so yeah, Light in the Attic. It's a light in the attic reissue. I got Fred, did you show this? I can't remember. A cool album. Um, called sort of the, I don't know, the, the Latino Bob Dylan. Uh, listening to it, his voice and his delivery sort of remind me of Dylan and sort of you know, Dylan Cross with like James Taylor playing with like a sort of a funky rock band. Uh, but that is Rodriguez. This is his second album, Coming From Reality. Record, he's an American artist. This was recorded in the UK, though. I guess he was invited over there to record this. Die cut cover. Cool stuff. Um, really uh, excellent. So, happy to get it. Let's try and move on here. Uh, picked this up a while back now, but Jack Rose. Self-titled album, Jack Rose. I mean, the name, I guess, call him the legendary Jack Rose. I mean, the guitarist, um, acoustic players in the tradition of John Faye. Now, this was supposed to be a duets thing, and it didn't work out, so it's just his part. Really, really good stuff. Very, uh, very haunting. Very well-known acoustic guitar player. Um, was in a band before he went solo that played, like, droney, noisy stuff, but... Yeah, Jack Rose. Happy to get it. All right, some UK folk here. The Wicker Man finally got it. Um, reissue, of course. But the soundtrack to the movie, the film, I have not seen it yet. Um, either version. So, but yeah, very you know traditional UK folk. I think the band is Magnet that performs. Um, but yeah, excellent stuff. For those of you who like sort of the UK folk. All right, these next five are all by the same artist, and I bought a lot. I won a lot on e on uh, eBay. I don't know how. 
but five Roy Harper records for like, like 25, 25, 30 bucks, something like that. Yeah, cool stuff. Most of them are US pressings, but still. This is the only UK pressing, and it's a so-so record. This is from 1980, and it sounds very 80s in its production. It's sort of a rock album. Um, I gotta listen to it more, I have to admit, but Kate Bush is on this, so I think it's of interest to Kate, to Kate Bush fans. And that's Roy Harper, The Unknown Soldier. It's on Harvest, UK pressing. Yeah, not bad, but yeah, I gotta listen to it some more. I'm not crazy about this one. Roy Harper has a lot of albums, and some of them are better than others. Uh, of course, his later stuff. Not that I've heard it all, but I've read stuff could be sort of spotty. Anyway, moving on. Another one. Still sort of an, uh, almost a rock album, pretty much. Um, Roy Harper. I don't know how it's pronounced the original name of the album, but Another Day in England. You, uh, American Pressing. Not bad. This one I really liked a lot. Now, I listened to this on the internet a long time ago. I remember liking it, but then that last track, which takes up the whole second side, I was like, what is this? But getting the vinyl and listening to it, and after first few minutes or so once you start getting into the song it's, it gets really good I thought um, but yeah Life Mask this is the album um, immediately following Stormcock and I think it's excellent I really do Life Mask cool stuff now if you're not into Roy Harper or you want to check him out this is probably the best place to start I do admit this is killer live album 2 LPs Excuse me. Excellent. Uh, Flashes from the Archive of Oblivion. Pretty much a live album. I think there's one studio track on it, but phew, fantastic. Yeah, two all pieces to gatefold, but um, this will sometimes go for 25 alone. So it's to get this and all and the other four killer, excellent stuff. And finally. Comp Harper, 1970 to 1975. I really needed more of Roy Harper. I mean, I, I love love the guy. So cool stuff in a promo copy. Cool stuff. Uh, more UK folk here. This is an interesting album. This was originally released on the Famous Charisma label. From what I understand, this guy's two, two albums he put out on the Famous Charisma label are two of his rarest. They're really hard to get. So Drag City reissued them. This one is uh, Burgach, L.A. Turnaround. Really, really cool album. Uh, it came with a DVD documentary, and it has, uh, explains the sessions, the whole story behind it. it. has footage from the sessions. And apparently, he went to L.A. and wanted to record. So his record company, I think, set him up with Mike Nesmith of the Monkees. And Mike Nesmith apparently had no idea who Bert Yonch was, but produced this album. And I think he plays on it a little bit, but cool stuff. Bert Yonch, love the guy. LA Turnaround, Drag City reissue. And speaking of Bert Yonch, an album that's been on my list for a while, I never ever see it. Never saw it out in the wild until I saw this copy. And uh, I jumped on it. The Pentangle, Solomon Seal. Pentangle, of course. UK folk super group, um, Bert Yanch, John Renborn, um, Danny Thompson, excellent, excellent stuff. Love that group. I guess this was uh, part of from the uh, New York Public Library, stamped on there and on the label. But it was cheap, in beautiful shape. This is excellent. Really a good album by Van Morrison. St. Dominic's Preview. Uh, an original in beautiful shape. Um, still has the. Yeah. It's, it's an excellent album. Green Warner Brothers label. Um, and it has the insert somewhere. Yeah. Still has the insert. Um, Jackie Wilson. Jackie Wilson said, I love it when you smile. Gypsy, I'll be there. St. Dominic's preview. Almost Independence Day, really, really good album, man. 
Happy to get it in just beautiful shape. This one too. Again, near mint. Um, I never see this. I see the reissue, I think. Maybe Sunday's put it out or something, but um, yeah. <clears throat> the Flying Burrito Brothers with Burrito Deluxe on A&M Records. Near mint shape, just beautiful. Now, the Flying Burrito Brothers, if you don't know, were sort of made up after the Birds. Um, a couple of members from the Birds left. Um, Chris Holman from the Birds, but most notably Grant Parsons. Now, when Grant Parsons joined the Birds and they did uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo, it very much became like a country rock album. Same with this. Now, to listen to this, it's like it's probably more country than what passes for country these days. But at the time, it's, you know, really considered country rock. But I'm a big Grant Parsons fan. And really happy to get this again. Near Mint. Still has the original um, inner sleeve. Yeah, it's A&M label. Really happy to get this one. Cool stuff. A lot of cool originals here. Alright, moving on. Um, this is a replacement copy. I had the reissue of this. Um, love this band. I have a handful of their albums. And um, had the reissue of this and came across a near mint original. Very reasonably priced, so I grabbed it. Pearls Before Swine. Their first album, One Nation Underground. Thomas Rapp, of course. Just Excellent psych folk. Um, for those of you who don't know, Pearls Before Swine, killer. This is essential, in my opinion. Um, they have a couple other albums that are pretty essential as well. But, but yeah, I have the uh, reissue of this, so I'll probably pass the reissue on to somebody. But yeah, Pearls Before Swine. And I did not have this one. Their second album, Pearls Before Swine, These Things Too. Didn't have it. And this is probably pretty damn essential. Um, folk, psych folk, an original, and the two-tone reprise label, and just beautiful, beautiful shape. If you don't know Pearls Before Swine, Thomas Rapp sings with a very pronounced lisp, and it could be um, off-putting at first, but I mean it's you know it's just part of his style and it's excellent. Second album, these things too, killer. I should say this is an original on ESP disc, but yeah. And this one, I need to spend more time listening to. I can't really say much about it. I put it on, but then just sort of walked away and didn't really focus on it. But I probably have all the Pearls Before Swine that I need now. Uh, Pearls Before Swine, City of Gold. Um, original members left, and it sort of just became Thomas Rapp. But as you can see, it's Thomas Rapp, Pearls Before Swine, City of Gold, promo copy. And, and it's a white label promo. On reprise. Mint. Mint. I've been getting lucky with the promos. I gotta say, I got a, I got a couple more, I believe, that um, pretty mind-blowing promos. But yeah. This one, I gotta listen, this, gotta listen to this one some more, too. But... Um, what I heard sometimes is pretty out there, but it's a soundtrack to a film, Stone. Now, this was on Finders Keepers. The artist that recorded this is Billy Green. And yeah, it's the soundtrack to the movie Stone. I guess it's about a biker, biker gang, or about bikers. Um, but yeah, psychedelic, very out there stuff. Very cool. You guys have probably seen this cover. Alright, now really getting into the psych stuff. As I said, I've been getting very lucky, but this one I've wanted for a little while. I think Fred showed this, pretty sure. Um, originally released as a private press, St. Paul, Minnesota, local band. They put out a couple singles and then they recorded this, and at the time it was probably really over the top for a local band or record and release locally. It's since become a collector's item. If you could find the original of this, I mean, you know, you're rich. Uh, it's been bootlegged very often, but Sunday's put out this reissue. And Sunday's always does an excellent job with everything they're mastering. Just 
uh, the CA Quintet, A Trip Through Hell. Excuse me. Very, very psychedelic, somewhat dark at times, but excellent, excellent psych album. Those of you who like psych, man, this is killer. They released it as a two LP set. The second disc is sort of outtakes and uh, other unreleased stuff, but yeah, excellent. Check it out. A Trip Through Hell. Great stuff. Here's one, uh, again, a lot of essential psych here, I'll say that. Did not have this one. Of the birds, fifth dimension. As essential psych as it gets, I mean, um, this is an original. The cover's kind of beat, but it's not too, too bad. Just a lot of wear on it. Um, but the, the vinyl is mint, and it's an original uh, mono pressing in Columbia. And yeah, Mr. Spaceman, Eight Miles High. Uh, some of these tracks are very Coltrane influenced. They were listening to a lot of Coltrane at the time. I mean, probably heard that story a million times that they were touring listening to uh, a lot of Coltrane, you know. But yeah, excellent. Again, essential psych. Quicksilver Messenger Service, um, Happy Trails. Didn't have this one. Now, this is a slightly later press on the Orange Capital label. The store actually had an original uh, Rainbow Capital label, but um, this one was in nicer shape. I believe they were both the same price, but this one was just in better shape. It's actually like near mint for eight bucks, so I grabbed it. Um, essential, essential. And probably considered like the quintessential, one of the quintessential uh, San Francisco site bands and albums. Uh, Happy Trails, killer. That that uh, medley they do, the Who Do You Love thing, excellent, but the whole album. And this one as well. Again, Essential Psych. Uh, their first album. This is an original, Quicksilver Messenger Service. It's hard to find this without any ring wear, you know, but yeah, killer, killer. And this is in beautiful shape, other than that ring wear. It's really nice. Um, on the Rainbow Capital label, I'll pull it out real quick. But yeah, excellent stuff. I guess these guys waited, there was a rush to sign all the San Francisco bands, and these guys were one of the last to sign to a major label. Um, so these albums were released, I think this was like 69 when this finally came out. But yeah, cool stuff. Again, H.P. Lovecraft, Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft 2, uh, I have their first album, this is an original on Phillips, beautiful shape, the vinyl comes out of here, I won't pull it all out, but yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful psych album, uh, supposedly recorded under the influence of LSD, the whole album, the story goes, but excellent stuff. Now, for those of you who are psych fans, and don't know this album, I highly recommend checking it out. New York Band released one album. Uh, I'm surprised it's not more well known as like a psych classic. But yeah, The Headshot. Their only album, killer. I mean, very much a psych album. Um, they do a cover of Revolution. They do a cover of Yesterday as well. But, trust me, it's, it's a killer psych album. If you can find it, get it. This is a slightly later reissue. I want to say probably late 70s, early 80s. Uh, probably early 80s. I couldn't find that this pressing on Discogs, but it's on the later Epic. So I'm guessing early 80s. There's no barcode, but it's on this Epic. So either 70s or 80s. Killer. Do check it out. The Headshot. All right, continuing on, the Psych Blossom Toes. We are ever so clean, killer, killer, killer Psych. Uh, I guess this album sold like shit when it came out, so it sort of became a collector's item again. So uh, Sunbeam reissue, double LP now, same thing. Second LP or I believe unreleased and outtakes, things like that. But um, yeah, UK Psych band, killer, Blossom Toes. Psych veering on progressive, I should say. Now, 
essential, essential UK psych. The UK band now, um, Kaleidoscope, Tangerine Dream, again, Sunbeam Reissue, probably one of the first UK psych bands with like Soft Machine and Pink Floyd, but excellent, excellent. Um, beautiful harmonies, just a beautiful record, killer stuff. And yeah, continuing, essential. 13th floor elevators, Easter everywhere. Killer. This is killer. Um, it's not an official press. I'm pretty sure it's, it's an unofficial pressing, but it sounds pretty damn good, I gotta say. It has a shiny gold cover. I mean, uh, their second album released in 67. I might like this better than the psychedelic sounds. Um, Slip Inside This House, killer track. They do a really, you know, psych cover of It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. Uh, and Levitation, another great track. Killer. 13th Floor Elevators. Really happy to get that, even if it is unofficial. Now, Essential, Essentials, like, I know I keep saying it, but this. If you don't have this record, you must seek it out. I'm telling you, if you like psych, Tomorrow, Killer. Killer, killer UK psych. Uh, feature Steve Howe, who of course went on to join Yes. Unbelievable record. Uh, I want to say Nicky Hopkins is in this as well. Um, released end of 67, 68. Killer. They do a cover of Strawberry Fields Forever. Killer cover. I mean, um, but yeah, everything about this album I love. The White Bicycle. The Incredible Journey of Timothy Chase, um, Three Jolly Little Dwarfs, <laughs> killer album, man, I'm telling you, get it if you don't have this tomorrow. This is an unbelievable score, it really, really is, uh, and I got this for such a reasonable price uh, compared to what it goes for. Unbelievable score. The Yellow Balloon. Sunshine Pop, some of the finest Sunshine Pop, I think. Um, L.A. band. I think the story with this is the writer, the guy that wrote the single called The Yellow Balloon, um, sold it to Jan and Dean, the, the duo, and they recorded it, but he didn't like that version, so he shopped around and sold the single to the Canterbury label. And um, the writer, I forget his name, it's escaping me, but... Uh, it's gonna bug me but um the writer of that track sang vocals on the single and they got session musicians to play on it they released the single and it became a hit and it beat out Janet Dean's um uh their version you know so there was a clamoring for the yellow balloon where's this band we want them to perform we want an album and the band didn't really exist so they recruited session musicians and what's the guy's name? Grady, something Grady from, uh, he was in My Three Sons. And he's on this album. And um, it's since become a you know, sort of sought after Sunshine Pop album. And yeah, this is an original and it's actually a promo. You see their promo copy. And it's in beautiful shape. I found this in my local store. And it's been there for a little while on the Canterbury label. Beautiful shape, man. Just pristine. Uh, and somebody wrote AM. It is probably something to be played on AM back in the day. That, yeah, that's the only thing. But it's a promo copy, you know? So happy to find this. Uh, an original copy of The Fugs. Um, Tenderness Junction. <laughs> really cool, interesting stuff. Uh, Gregory Corso and Allen Ginsberg, too. Two of my like hero beat writers are on this. Yeah, Gregor Corso and Allen Ginsberg. It is an original and it's on the three tone reprise label. And yeah, again, pristine. Just beautiful. I can't believe it. Again, found it in my local store. It was cheap. Like uh, I don't know, ten bucks or something, fifteen at the most. I don't know, but Fugs. Uh, this was a cool score too. A couple 
blues rock classics, I should say. An original copy, U.S. pressing of 10 Years After. Look at that. But yeah, you guys know 10 Years After. It's very much, you know, blues, boogie sort of album. Um, not as psychedelic as it looks. But still, it's an original on Duran. Uh, okay, get it out this way. No. I'll show you the label. The Ram label. Cool stuff, and again, beautiful shape. Ten years after. And this one as well. This one is an original as well. Taste. Roy Gallagher. Power Trio. Um, blues rock, just really raw. Irish band. Excellent stuff. Uh, this copy isn't as, it's probably a VG, VG plus, VG plus, but it is an original. It's a little bit of noise on there, a couple scuffs, but, you know, it's kind of, it's, record could go for a lot sometimes. Happy to get it. Very, very raw stuff, but excellent. Alright, sort of getting the slightly more progressive areas. This record I have not listened to yet, and again, as I've said before, Zappa, Sleep Dirt, later Zappa, late 70s Zappa. I haven't listened to it yet, so I can't say anything about it. But, I picked this up. This is a replacement copy. I have this. My copy is in, it's in good enough shape. But this one, it was so nice, I had to get it. The Mothers, Weasels Rip My Flesh. Had to get it. It's just beautiful, beautiful shape. Um, at my local store. One of my local stores. Yeah, had to get it. Well, these I didn't have. Again, pristine. This thing is like unplayed. Uh, I don't know how you would say it, but the blank, blank, blank of the mothers, you know? Um, so this is a Verve compilation. One of two or three mothers comps that they put out. Made up of stuff from Freak Out. Absolutely free, and we're only in it for the money. And it was cheap enough, and it's in such a nice shape, I had to grab it. But, yeah, I think this is like my second or third mother's comp. Um, but, yeah, I gotta do, I think I'm about ready to do a uh, Frank Zappa collection video. I could get this in there. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot I don't have. But, I have most of the good stuff. And this one was one I've been after for a little while. One of the few Zap albums I've been really wanting after. The Grand Wazoo. This is killer. Um, yeah, Zap was doing free jazz for the most part. I mean, sort of a big jazz band. This is the Zap I love. The Mothers, you know, Grand Wazoo. And this is an original on the beautiful shape. I got this for so cheap, I couldn't believe it. Bizarre. Pristine. I was bidding on a copy of this once, and it got up to $40. And I was outbid. I wasn't going to, you know, I didn't get anywhere near that. But it sold up to $40. I got this for like, I want to say like $18. It was under $20. Yeah, I'm like, bizarre, but yeah, I got it. All right. Still got a little ways to go. I'm sorry, this is going to be long as shit. It's already a half hour. Some Brazilian records. Now this is the Brazilian comp put together by David Byrne. Uh, Brazil Classics Volume 1. A really good place to start if you want to check out some Brazilian music. Um, Tropicalia, things like that. But yeah, really, really good. Uh, I finally picked up some albums by... I must say, uh, Eric the Viking definitely inspired me. I had a couple uh, Brazilian albums. Um, Gal Costa, the Four Men with Beards reissue, and the Georgie Ben Four Men with Beards reissue. But Eric the Viking definitely inspired me to check out some more. Hey, Eric, love your videos, man. Make some more. The Oscutantes, or the Mutants, their first album. Again, this is a psych album all the way. I mean... Brazilian, they combine sort of, you know, Brazilian and American um, influences, obviously, but killer. This is excellent. And this one was pretty good, too, but this is the last one featuring the original lineup. 
the reissues, of course, but I'm, I don't even know the title. I want to say this is their fourth or fifth album. Mutants. This is really good too, but that first album, man. This is a. Oh, this is a cool score. Georgie Ben, Africa, Brazil. An original Brazilian press. You can see that there. It's in the sleeve, the writing's on the sleeve. But the sleeve is very, very thin, you know. But the vinyl is beautiful. But yeah, killer, funky, funky, you know, Brazilian. Uh, it's very soulful stuff. Excellent, really. 1976, I want to say. But yeah, couldn't believe I saw this. Cool stuff. Found it at a store. And this one too, I found it at a local store. Couldn't believe it. This one seems to be pretty hard to get. Uh, at least in the States. I don't know how it is in the UK. But yeah. Killer, I couldn't believe it. And just pristine shape. Gilbarto Gil. Self-titled. Now this is the album he was um, sort of... Uh, I, 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 he was sort of exiled for being part of the Tropicalia movement. Uh, and he was in the UK and he recorded this album. It's his only album all in English. And it is uh, a US pressing, an original, on the Paramount Records label. It does a cover of um, Can't Find My Way Home. But yeah, this is excellent. And just pristine shape. I'm telling you, I couldn't believe when I saw it in the store. It's the label, the Paramount label. I tried looking it up online. This, this isn't easy to get. Um, but, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, and that's the few Brazilian records I have. Now we're getting into the progressive, progressive rock, kraut rock area here. Uh, Family. Their last album with It's Only a Movie. Not bad. Um, not as good as the earlier stuff I've heard by them, but still not bad at all. Very cool record. Family. Picked up the Fender Graph Generators, God Bluff. I think they had broken up or run hiatus or something and when they got back together. 76, this is what they put out. Again, you know, a progressive rock classic. Excellent. Got this for cheap too. Um, I've been outbid on it before. This is an eBay buy. This one I found in a local store. I couldn't believe it. Jade Warrior, uh, Floating World. Now uh, this is a radio promo. Um, now I think Floating World is probably one of their easier records to find. It is on island, but still this radio promo. What's interesting is it's stamped there, but it, it opens over here. I'm sure they just weren't paying attention on island records. Not bad, you know, Jade Warrior. Um, not quite as good as the earlier stuff I've heard, but still a very cool score for 10 bucks. Now this record too, tends to go for a lot, I guess. It's got a tiny bit of water damage on the cover, but the record is near mint. Uh, and that's Socrates with Vangelis. Now, yeah, I guess Fios, however you say that, Fios. Uh, and I guess, yeah, this could fetch upwards, it's like $100. Um, or around there, you know, it could be in a pricey record. But I got this for 20 bucks because of that damage, you know, but hell. Uh, it is on the... Now, Socrates was a Greek band, and Vangelis sat in with them. I think he played some drums and keyboards on this album. It's essentially a rock album with some sort of progressive leanings, but for those Vangelis fans, you know, this is definitely of interest. And it's not bad at all, you know, it's a cool record for sure. And I thought it was interesting enough, you know, so I grabbed it. This next album I am absolutely in love with. And I wished I checked it out for uh, sooner. It's an obscure classic of Fred's. Now it's the American pressing. I know the UK pressing comes as, as a double LP. The American as a single. But it is a promo copy. Marjorie Razorblade by... Uh, by Kevin Coyne. Yeah. Killer. Killer, killer, killer album. In love with this album, I really am. It's like a cross between, I want to say like, uh, 
Captain Beefheart and Van Morrison. It's just fantastic. The writing on it's top notch. The playing is just such a good album. Yeah, on um, um, Virgin Records, promo copy. I don't know if it's a white label, let me see. You guys are in for a long ass video. This is probably the longest video I've ever made. No, but just the regular Virgin label. Killer album. Like, I was listening to it, I was just like, wow, this is really good. But yeah, Kevin Coyne. Alright, a couple Kraut Rock. Kraut Rock Essentials, really. Um, Cluster with a K, their first album um, reissued, Bureau B. Now the story with this is Mobius and Rodelius and Conrad Schnitzler were in War Cluster and they wanted to put out an album. Uh, Conrad found a uh, an advertisement in the newspaper it was for, uh, they wanted new music but it was a religious label so they said okay we'll put out your music but you have to put religious sort of speaking, spoken word on the first side. So that's what they did with both albums. Now it's all in German. And I believe Conrad Schnitzler even said, if you don't know German, these albums are a lot better. And I don't, I don't know German. So, killer. Their first two albums, both reissued. Both essential crowd rock albums. Um, really, avant-garde, electronic, um, veering on industrial at times. It's like killer stuff. Uh, I think I like... I'm, I, I can't pronounce either one of their the titles, but I think I like this one, their first one, a little bit better, but they're both great. Uh, reissue here. I pre-ordered this. When I heard these were being reissued, I couldn't believe it. To get this album, any pressing of it, for 15 bucks or whatever, it, it, 18 or something, I couldn't believe it, but Agitation Free, their first album, Malesh, Malesh, however you say it, uh, Kraut Rock with a Middle Eastern flavor. They had toured the Middle East, e Egypt, and really influenced them, but killer. Reissue. I know Mike showed this as well. Um, we both knew about it. We both pre ordered it from Amazon. Yeah, so glad to get this, and I can't wait for the second to come out. Alright, and last, not last, but last sort of Kraut Rock album. This is, I'm in love with this album. I really am. This is so good. It's it's out there, but still very listenable. And at other times, it's it's just it's just awesome, uh, etc. By uh, Wolfgang Downer, and I believe uh, Eberhard Weber is on here as well. Killer, killer, killer. I don't know how official this pressing is or what. It's a gatefold. Um, I think it's probably official. I don't oh. know. But this is fantastic. Um, jazzy, kraut rock, avant-garde, just fantastic. Essential. Absolutely essential. Love it. Um, sort of jazzy. And this is a Fred album. Big Star 1000 all the way. Placebo. All of Eyes. Their debut. Belgian band. Mark Moulin. Jazzy, funky. Great stuff. I'm going to mention Mark Mulan again in a minute, but Placebo, Ball of Eyes, killer. Uh, getting into some uh, Canterbury stuff, Steve Hillage. Now, this is uh, Rainbow Dome music. I think I first heard of this from Henry to the boy Ellis. Early electronic, sort of new agey sort of stuff. Um, very different for Steve Hillage, um, but yeah. I liked it. A lot of Steve Village fans don't like this album, surprisingly. But, yeah, electronic, just very chill, electronic, you know? Cool stuff. Henry Cow. Henry Western Culture. Their last album is Henry Cow. What can you say? I mean, Henry Cow is just the shit, really. I mean, once you could get into this stuff, it's like, love it, love it. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to move fast now. Uh, oh yeah, this one too. Art Bears, um, Winter Songs. Their first official Art Bears album. 
I believe Hopes and Fears was actually recorded as Henry Cow, but just released as Art Bears. But yeah, again, really, really good. I might like Hopes and Fears a little bit more, but this is still excellent. Winter Songs, killer. Uh, this is one I've wanted forever. Kevin Ayers, Brian Eno, uh, John Cale and Nico, June 1st, 1974. Concert they did at the Rainbow Theater, I believe. Mike Goldfield and Robert Wyatt are on this as well. Killer stuff. I believe the story is John Cale caught Kevin Ayers sleeping with his wife like the night before this performance. So that photo of them looking at each other like that is of no help. Oh. But still, uh, on the pink Ram Dylan label, beautiful shade too. Um, this one, again, I've been after this for a while. Sort of Robert Wyatt's first solo album, The End of an Ear. Um, mostly sort of free jazzy experimental. While he was on hiatus from Soft Machine, a year later or something, he, he, would, he left the band. Or, but yeah, re, little, slightly later reissue on CBS, but still very cool. No lyrics. Um, this is a long video. Uh, no lyrics, but um, still vocal experimentations. Wanted this for a while. Uh, not really Robert, Robert Wyatt's fans, like, favorite, but still very cool. Well, this is a cool find. Um, in my local store, no less. Now, I have this album. The thing is, this one was so pristine. I had to get it. Not only that, Soft Machine 3rd. Okay? My copy is very nice, but it's not on this level. This is, like near mint pristine okay now the thing about this though is that it's a <laughs> it's a white label promo okay now it's a gay fold like normal you know here's the back I mean I touch a ring wear but I think mine has much worse ring wear on it but the gate fold usually record one is in the cover part and record two is in the back cover part but there's nothing, it doesn't open, it's just a cardboard piece here. And the two LPs are in here. And the funny thing is, the LPs, each track, as we know, there's a track on each side. But they're banded for radio play, if you could see that. Because they're all long tracks, and they broke them all out. Oh, it's upside down. They broke them all out for radio play. So you have um, How Bloody Rages, part one, two, three, four, five. And they're broken out like five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. And each track is like that. So I'm going to be holding on to my original copy, my listening copy. But this is just really appealed to the collector and me, you know, and had to get it. And it's in such pristine shape. And for the price I got it for, I can only imagine what this will go for online. But it's mine. <clears throat> yeah, really cool. Classic album, promo. I mean, U.S. pressing, but still. Christ. Anyway, one more promo here. Almost done, I promise. Now, this is pristine. Absolutely near mint. Uh, I know I say it a lot, but this really is near mint. I couldn't believe it when I got it. Uh, it came in the mail. Magma. They're, I don't know if their second or third album. I'm not going to try and pronounce this album, but it's mostly known as MDK, probably their most well known album. Um, probably the first one released outside the outside of Europe. First one released in the States. And it is a, a, a promo copy. Uh, the label is not white, but it says promo on the label. It's a custom label. Uh, hold on. What happened here? It disappeared. Hold on. There I am. All right. I told it's late. God damn, it's late. But yeah, it's a custom label. You can see there it says promo, not for sale. Magma. I mean Christian Vander. You know, very uh, out of like operatic sort of chanting. Interesting, very Coltrane influenced, but yeah, this thing is so nice. 
I couldn't believe it. Gatefold. Yeah, Magma is just so cool. It might take a little while to get into them, but it's the kind of thing where you put it on, you just gotta let the music do its thing at first, you know, and then sort of once you start getting used to their sound and everything, um, you know, you get to know it, but at first you just gotta let go and let the music do its thing, you know? But yeah, really happy to get this one. Now this was a score too. Um, now I got this for dirt cheap online and I couldn't believe it. It's so bright. Um, could not believe it. The thing is, it said tape. You know, like split scene tape along, all along the top. But when I got it, let me show you what it is though. The second album by Comus. To keep from crying, an original on Virgin, and uh, yeah, cool stuff. Now in the picture online, at tape all along the edge, so you assume that the split scene, somebody taped it. It's not split at all. When I got it, I just slowly peeled the tape off, and it was perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It came unglued, the seam. So you just glue it again. You guys know. And it's perfectly fine, I glued it. Um, but yeah, much more of a progressive rock feel to it. There's an actual drum kit on this, keyboards. Um, some parts I like better than others, you know, but I gotta spend more time with it. I listened to it once all the way through, and uh, it's still a very cool find. And Yeah, so cool to get this. Last couple now. This is a reissue, but I've been after this album for a while on vinyl and Canterbury, but it's not Canterbury, this is Belgian. Now, it, it's on list of like essential Canterbury sounding albums. And how you pronounce it, I'm not sure if it's Coz, Coz Viva Boma. Belgian, progressive, fantastic. Mark Moulin produced this and it plays on, a, I think a track or two, maybe one track. Excellent, excellent stuff. I love this album, like absolutely obsessed with it. Now the front, Viva Boma, the river in Africa, hence the hippopotamus, but the back, Viva Boma, I guess means grandmother, and there's the grandmother there, sort of a joke, killer, killer stuff. The percussion on this, the keyboard playing on this, so good. Check this out if you don't know it. Jazzy, progressive rock, just so good, um, yeah. And finally, along the same lines, um, but from the Netherlands, again, jazzy, progressive, Canterbury-ish, sort of the Netherlands answer to Soft Machine or or Caravan even, um, maybe with a bit of Zappa thrown in. I'm sure some of you guys know this band. Super Sister, to the highest bidder. I've been after this album too. Excellent, excellent. Again, in the Canterbury style, but not. It's Belgian. I mean, it's from the uh, the Netherlands. And this is fantastic album. An original press. From the Netherlands. But yeah, Super Sister, to the highest bidder. In beautiful shape on Polydor. There's the record. Yeah, just beautiful shape. I mean... So happy to get this. All right, I'm going to end this because this is it. It's everything. It's the last thing. Super Sister. This won't be up till the morning, but there's a lot here. I told you it's going to be monster. Holy shit. This is by far my longest video. I got to go to bed. I don't know. Hope you guys get through this. Cheers. Leave me comments. Christ.